what should be done in a situation when you approach someone who is just sick, glorified his or her sicknesses, and that he or she thinks you are sick. How to make a judgment? Who is going for a better approach? Who is really sick? You see, thinking of it, one can never be fully sure. Never. And in terms of thought, it is not even advisable that one is just too sure, because that would be a kind of arrogance. So just as one has all the rights, rather the responsibility to approach the other and say that the other might be sick. Of course, not in a way of accusing, but in a way of loving. Similarly, the other one too has a right to turn around and say, well, I think there is a bug here and a little bit of sickness might lie with you as well. One has to accept it and inquire for the fact. There might be some fact in what the other is saying. And it is possible that the other is exaggerating beyond the fact, that the other is not just stating a fact, rather turning around to attack you because he doesn't like that you are calling his bluff, that is also possible. That is the main critical situation. Yes, but before we come to that conclusion, it is first of all necessary to examine without bias, without self-centered prejudice, the extent of factualness in what the other has to say about us because we hardly have a right to go and declare the other sick if we cannot tolerate the same thing being said by the other towards us. So first of all, there has to be a healthy acceptance of what the other has to say. And after that, if it really clearly comes out that the, that the other is just trying to be vengeful, that the other is just trying to extract a kind of a petty revenge, then one has to test his own metal. You know, that is the test of love. You have gone out and opened your heart and you want to do good to the other. Situation becomes gruesome when other fellow use it as a tool to impose his or her uh, thinking on you. Or at least protect his, sick, or at least protect protect his, his own thinking. Also second yes, obviously. And that has to be expected. After all, you are attacking somebody's very foundations. To the other person, his ego is his world. To the other person, there is only one way 
that exists of looking at the world which is his own personal way and you are attacking that way that is what is it is also but remember sickness can be healed only by the touch of health those who are interested in helping and healing others must be extremely cautious about their own health otherwise in spite of all the good intentions the sickness of the world would take possession of the healer as well the same thing that you want to dissolve to attack to get rid of you would find that the same thing has dominated your mind now instead of one sick person you have two sick persons so it is a great motivation in fact it is in, in some sense a kind of temptation to be a do gooder i am trying to help the world and yes we do require a lot of people who go out there who can step beyond their limited self interest but the responsibility of such people is far greater than the responsibility of those who are living within themselves now you have the responsibility of others and the responsibility to protect your own health also and sickness has its own ways rest assured you attack sickness sickness will attack your health that is necessarily going to happen and that is just as we said what is going to test your metal the depth of your health the problem is how to handle it only health can handle it only health can handle it it is not a battle that is fought once and for all it is an ongoing thing you approach sickness and sickness responds with a cruel lash a backlash it is only when you face that kind of backlash or retort that you come to know the fact about your own health how strong you really are if it doesn't destroy you then stay put keep fighting and if you feel that it has exposed a particular vulnerability within you then recede first take care of your own vulnerability your own sickness and then go back again it's an ongoing thing it's an ongoing thing yes, one cannot make it an ego issue one cannot say that now that i have jumped into the battle how can i make a retreat you will have to retreat a thousand times you will have to return to your own shelters 
to nurse your wounds. True. And wounds you will get a plenty. Rest assured. Even if you try to accept it and move along with it, it becomes a problematic again. Because other person started treating you as a sick person. Again, situation come to back to again square one. And the worst thing that can happen is when the perceptions of the world become your own perception. I went out towards the world thinking of myself as a healthy being with all the noble intentions to help the world and what happened instead? The world succeeded in convincing me that I am sick. And it happens very often, very frequently. Very true. So in this situation, one can only live a life of conviction because the moment I am trying to tell a person that you are doing something incorrectly, I am almost trespassing the fact that probably I am larger than you or I am Yes, bigger yes. in my thoughts than what you yes, are. Yes, yes. There's no point because it's a vicious circle. I can't even blame the other person because what they are part of is because probably they've got this sense from higher sense of authority and I being a person who is no one to this person might just claim that who are you to stand against right. the society? Right, right. It doesn't solve okay. anywhere. You are very right. To the other person, it is like an interference in something that is very personal and intimate to him. Especially if your advice comes unsolicited and such advice has to come unsolicited. Nobody is ever going to say that I need advice on the most central matters of living. Nobody is ever going to say that I do not know what love is, I do not know what relationships are, I do not know what is the place of joy and compassion in life. Because it is such a shameful thing to accept. You know, oblivion for the fact that they have intermingled words together. They don't know joy, happiness, love, it's all the same. So problem is it's getting interchangeable, interchangeably used across. It is going to be used in some way or the other because one has to continue with the business of living. Nobody can come to a point and just stop dead there, seeing that how do I proceed with living? I do not know what is love and how can I continue to live lovelessly? So people will continue living and they have no option but to continue to tell themselves there is nothing terribly wrong with them. Everybody feels that a little bit here and there is missing in his or her life, right? To that everybody agrees and that is taken as the spice of life. A 2% here, a 5% there is missing. One says, well, you know, perfection must not be there. Something must always be left to achieve. So 2%, 5% kind of a thing, everybody would admit and agree to. They would say, yes, a little bit is missing. Otherwise, I am all right. Life is just about perfect. Just that, you know, 
I am waiting for my next million. I am waiting for my son to get his job. But nobody is ever going to be very agreeable to accepting that the fundamentals of life are missing. And when you go and say that, then do not expect kind words from anybody. Essentially, you are telling them that they are wasting their life. Hmm? Hence, there has to be a deep humility in the heart when you approach somebody. And hence, there has to be a great strength in your resolve and compassion. If you have an expectation that you are going to be felicitated, rewarded, that the world is going to raise temples in your honor, it is not going to happen.